Hello world, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about submeshes. We're going to convert our mesh, individual single mesh system into a submesh system. Uh, this is very important because later on down the line, we're going to want to be using multiple textures for one mesh. In the case of the example that I'll be talking about, we have a chest that consists of wood parts and metal parts. And we don't want those to all be a part of the same material because the metal should be shinier than the actual wood. So we need a, some way to separate that. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that mesh and just split it up into sub meshes. Before I get started, I am going to go ahead and quickly plug a really cool tutorial site called CG Boost. Basically, you can go here and learn how to use Blender from a pretty basic level all the way up to a really intermediate slash advanced level. Uh, they have this challenge section where people do their own submissions and they submit these really funny pictures. So if you do anything on this site, I recommend going into the challenges, checking out the challenges and look at other users who have submitted really cool blender models. So go check out CG Boost uh, because they're awesome. If you like this episode, hit thumbs up. If you want to support me, go ahead and go on over to Patreon. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description and you can patronize me as much as you want. Also, I have a Discord channel. So if you want to come over there, chit chat, ask me questions, that's awesome too. Um, but other than that, let's get into submeshes. Okay, so a couple of days ago on YouTube, I did a live stream where I made this little application using our current game engine. And its basic functionality is to show us what I mean by submeshes. So if I look at the main mesh here, from the top level, you can't tell this has multiple submeshes. And I could show you that one of the submeshes is this metallic trim. It's this shiny metallic trim. It has one, a texture, the metal parts, like the gold and the silver, and it has this shine material. If I show mesh two, that's the wood. And it's basically just kind of combined. Each one of these sub meshes is combined to make this final chest. See the wood's nice and dull, the metal shiny. And if I kind of rotate it around, there's shine on this box, no shine on the wood. And that's because they're sub meshes. So the way it works, we're gonna have a mesh class. And inside of that mesh class, we're gonna have multiple sub meshes, as many sub meshes as we want. So let's jump into the code right now. Okay, so back in the code, this is our old mesh system. As you can see, we have the mesh library, okay? Mesh library, we understand what that is. Uh, we have this protocol mesh, which contains two functions. We have a model mesh and a custom mesh. We have two separate types of meshes doing almost the same exact thing. Uh, if I go into the model mesh, you'll see we have this load model right here, which basically does sub meshing. So there's sub meshes here, but it's not a part of this custom mesh class. What I aim to do is fix that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab the code from online. I've already put this on GitHub. You can go grab this. I put it on github.com. If you go into helpful files, I created this new code folder for us. If we go to mesh library two here, and I'm just gonna copy all this, and I'm gonna take this code, and I am going to put it right here. Okay, so as you can see, this class is a little bit easier to understand. Right here below, we just have a mesh class. There's nothing it really needs. It's just a no mesh. Uh, and then we have the triangle mesh, the quad mesh, and the Q mesh. Above, we have a mesh and a sub mesh class now, and we have that same exact mesh library. So uh, the one thing that stands out above all is that the mesh class contains vertex information. That's the main thing you need to understand. Mesh equals vertices in space. It doesn't know how or what order to put those vertices in. All it knows is I have vertices, they're off in space somewhere, and I need someone to tie them together. Uh, and so that's the job of the sub mesh. So if I, if I open up the mesh, as you can see, I just have vertices, vertex count, and vertex buffer. If I were to go into the sub mesh class, I have all of that index information. And that's because the sub mesh is just a collection within the mesh. And when I call draw primitives, I'm, all I'm doing is I'm saying, grab these indices, tie them together, and draw this with these UV coordinates, these normals, all tied to those specific vertices in that upper level mesh class. So if I dive down a little bit deeper inside of the mesh class, we can see that we have two initializers. This in it right here is used for our custom meshes, just these ones down here. Uh, where we create the mesh, we can override this function create mesh, and then we generate a buffer based on those meshes. Uh, we also have this other initializer which generates the models which come from like OBJ files. Okay, and that's gonna be down here where we call init create mesh from model, private font create mesh from model, and right here we have that nice initializer which we'll talk about right now. So the job of the create mesh from model function is to take in a URL, well, a model name, create an asset URL from that, and then generate an asset via 
that URL. I've changed up this constructor a little bit. I've added the preserve topology and error parameters because there's another constructor that takes those. I was having bugs with the way that the system was creating the topology. But yeah, this is the new method. Uh, we have this descriptor up here, which is exactly the same from the model mesh. I'm creating this array of MTK meshes now here inside of the function. And then we're creating the sub mesh data off of that. So in order to create the sub mesh data, well, we need to grab the first mesh in the MTK meshes array. Uh, we need to grab the first buffer in the MTK meshes buffers array. And then we need to grab that vertex count. Now, if you want to expand on this and have it support multiple meshes in the future, feel free. Uh, we're it, then we're iterating over all of the different sub meshes within our MTK mesh. Uh, I know what you're thinking. You're like, why aren't we just using the MTK sub meshes? Well, because I want to have a little more functionality. I want not to be constrained by Apple's dominance. You know what I mean? And so we're creating our own sub mesh. Uh, so basically I just grabbed that sub mesh at I in the sub mesh list. Uh, I'm generating it via a constructor that I'll talk about in a second. And then I'm calling the function add sub mesh, which simply just adds to our array, the sub mesh that we created. As you can see, we're just using this create mesh from model to create our sub meshes. That's what this kind of does. It creates the mesh, but really what it does is it creates the sub mesh on top of the mesh class. And then we have this draw primitive. So we're gonna check to see if that vertex, if it has a vertex buffer, we're gonna set that main vertex buffer, that huge vertices buffer that I'm talking about that's attached to the mesh. mesh. We're gonna set that. And then we're gonna iterate over every single sub mesh, if there are any sub meshes, and we are going to just call draw primitives. Uh, if there is no sub meshes, we're just gonna call draw primitives because we don't have any index information. Let's just draw. If I jump into the sub mesh class, you'll see all of this different information that used to be in the uh, load model class of the model mesh, but really we need to track this and set it when we call draw primitives up in our mesh class. So what I've done is I've taken in the constructor for the MTK sub mesh and I'm instantiating these all right now on load and then I'm calling create index buffer when we call the basic in it. So this, this in it right here is gonna be when we pass in some indices of our own and we want to create a buffer off of that. Uh, last thing I wanna show you in this file is if we go down to these meshes right here, you'll see triangle mesh is the same. We're just adding vertices. There's no sub meshes needed because we have three vertices. Just draw those in that correct order. Uh, but if I go down to the quad mesh class and we do instant in indexed vertices, uh, you'll see we have add sub mesh. Um, so we add all these, all four vertices, and then we add a sub mesh with indices right here. And we define our quad. So anytime we want to add a sub mesh, all we have to do is call that nice constructor from down there. And here's our cube class. I've just went through and added the normals for the cube based on the face. So that's something I added for you guys if you wanted. I'm going to add that chest that we were talking about in the beginning of this episode. I'm gonna leave the link in the description from where I got that online. Uh, so you can go and check that out. But I'm gonna go ahead and add that to our engine and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've added the mesh type of chest and I've also added it to our library. Now we can go ahead and create an object in game shiz, game objects. I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it chest. It'll be a Swift file. So chest here and we're just gonna copy what is in the Suzanne's, because that's pretty straightforward. Go into chest, paste it, replace it. And now we can use this chest class. The only thing I need to do is I need to set the scale of this chest to like 0.01, because it's freaking huge. If I build this, that should work just fine. Inside my scene class, let's go to sandbox scene. Instead of doing the Suzanne's, let's refactor, let's rename. We're just gonna say chest, the Suzanne's, rename to chest that looks something like this. Now let's move the camera a little bit forward to maybe let's say three. So we're right up and close on this chest because we're gonna be working with this chest in the next couple episodes, adding textures, adding materials, making it look a little nicer. Let's move the chest down just a little bit. Let's move it down just to zero point, negative 0 0.5, boom. So there's our chest, nothing really special about it. We can set the texture and the material and stuff right now. But as I said, if I were to say chest, dot set material or set texture dot let's say party parrot if i were to set this texture right now 
Of course, it's not gonna make any sense. It's gonna be applied to the whole entire thing and it looks really, really ugly. So we need a way to separate that out. We're gonna do that in the next episodes. Hope you like this episode. Uh, like, subscribe. See you guys later.